And so here's Genesis chapter 2, verse 23 to 25. And if we can have that um, project if you found the screen. And I want you to hear and follow this. All right, so this is after creation. Right after, cre- this is God has done creation. And there's no sin in the world up to this point. And then God shows us what his intention for human life is, what it means to be human, and for all of human history, actually. And it shows right here. And so here's how it goes. It's actually in marriage. And so right, what's happened is God has made Adam. He's then he's made Eve, as, as many of you know. He's actually made Eve from a piece of her. So it's the point is that it's the completion. Adam is incomplete without Eve. And that human life is incomplete without the other that brings us fulfillment through a union in covenant. So here's the verse, verse 23. So this is what Adam said in response. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And here's the important verse, verse 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Let me read that verse 24 one more time. A man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And so, if you've grown up in the church, you've heard this verse many times. You've gone to weddings, hopefully you've heard this many times. Um, this is the fundamental definition of marriage. It is also the key to understanding covenant. So here's what it is. A lot of people think that, um, that you know, first there was this thing called, you know, you know, we have a man and we have a woman and they got to have babies. We're not going to have life. So God invented marriage, right? That's not what, what he did first. What he did was he said, I'm going to make these people and I'm going to marry them. <laughs> and then right after he made creation, he said, I want to give a picture of what that covenant, what that relationship that fundamental relationship is called covenant, where two who are distinct. You have a distinct individual and you have another distinct individual. They are different, but there is a way they can profoundly become one. A man shall leave his father and they shall become one flesh. There's a profound new kind of union. That's what covenant is. And when God made creation, he had this in mind. Covenant was the intention of creation. And then at the center of all of human life, you know what he put to build and make all of human life? Well, he put covenant to human life. And so any culture that does not have marriage, well, it's going to die out. By the way, our culture, if we don't change, and if we don't go back to God's understanding of covenant in marriage, America's going to die. It's just, it's, we're, we're just dying right now. There is no culture that can live without covenant. It's, actually, it's the absolute source of life. And everything about it is the source of life because where will your loneliness be quenched? That, uh, the one who is the other will not just come into you like bodily. We're talking about sex today, bodily. But really, the bodily is just a picture of the more fundamental reality. So this, this, uh, this this verse, a man shall leave his father and mother and his hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. I don't know if any of you understand this, but this is talking about sex. <laughs> and if it wasn't clear, well, verse one, and they were both naked. And they were happy about it. That's about sex. But you know what? It's first and foremost about covenant. Because in the Bible, sex is intrinsically, the covenant is at, is at the essence of sex. And covenant and se- sex is not primarily a bodily activity. What is going on is primarily a relational and spiritual activity. It's God, us being united to God, and then us in the, in the core of our being, at the most important relationship, being united toward your spouse and then toward, and toward God. This is why the person in your life that you are, you are to love the most, besides God, is your spouse. Your spouse is is the most profound relationship in your life apart from God. And so, just a little comment about this. Some of you um, don't like your spouse, but you, you, you love your kids. And that's, that's seriously broken. <laughs> You're in big trouble. And your children are in trouble. 
Because that's not how God made it. Because marriage is first and foremost a profound relational and spiritual union which is intended to mirror and reflect the most important union that God intended all of human life and all of human history for. Therefore, in our culture, if you separate out the bodily activity of sex, we call it sex, okay, from the covenantal union, that's wicked. It is inviting death and destruction into our life. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, I'm saying something that's really tough. And, of course, you know, if you don't have to be a Christian today, you know this is the norm of our society now. Um, our society isn't just non-covenantal. I would say it's anti-covenantal. <laughs> We're anti-covenantal to the core. We don't even want God. We do want sex, but we don't want God. And I'm not even sure if people want the relationship connected to sex. We want sex. We want it disconnected. That's, that's a death sentence. And... Um, we are paying the price. And I want to just say a little something to you today. I'm so thankful if you came and joined our worship service today and you do not believe in Jesus. Um, but if this is a, a question, and there's a lot of people today because you don't like the sexual ethic of Christianity. And that's one of the reasons why you reject Christianity. But I want to say something to you today. Um, you think, if you think you can put these things into two separate boxes, sex over here, and Christianity over here, you like all that stuff about God and forgiveness and justice from God and love, you know, helping the poor, but somehow the sexual ethic, we're going to just you know, separate. There is, that, that's not going to happen. And one of the things I want to say to you today is sex is a pointer. It's ultimately the physical expression of the deeper essence. Let me say that again. Sex is the physical expression and celebration of the deeper essence of the relational and spiritual union. And this might sound a little strange. When a husband and wife most deeply love each other in their bed through their sexual union, you know that's incredibly pleasing to God. You know why? Because that, that, that unbelievable union where everything is coming together, mind, heart, soul, body, everything, that in that, pro, in that moment of union is what God intends that we, everything that we are, that we shall love God with our heart, mind, heart, soul, body, everything. 